Welcome to the Agile community and our technical tips and tricks videos. My name is Sebastian Pariser, Director of Community and Senior Engineer. Today I will guide you through the process of how to transfer files to Azure OS. Like in more or less every case, we are using our management system to transfer the files to the endpoint. But even there, we have different components, how we can deliver that into the operating system platform, um, especially if we come to certificates uh, for your certificate authority or for local applications like a Java application or whatever else, even on the browser level. Firmware customization is our term for changing the graphical user interface to something more user-friendly, like integrating some wallpapers, some bootsplash logos, etc. So that's the part of our file function. And last but not least, uh, transferring your own files, like a script maybe, to a specific folder uh, during boot up to your endpoint and keep it there persistently. Like in every tutorial, we are looking at the Universal Management Suite, also known as UMS. So we already covered the fact why we would like to deploy files as the endpoint. But before going through into the process, let me just describe you where you don't need to upload a file. First one, you don't need to upload a file again if you already upload it through the firmware customization for a custom wallpaper, boot splash or logo. Because during the creation process of the firmware customization, you are already uploading the file into the right web dev component. So as soon as you assign this kind of profile to your endpoint, the endpoint will also download the file. So you don't have to assign it in addition. It's basically the same if you're speaking about universal firmware upgrade, because these components are already a profile who are delivering information to the endpoint where it can download the files from. So it's already there in the web dev component with the port, administrator, user, and password. So no need, no additional need to upload a file. So let's come back to the topic how you can deploy a file. First one, I will keep just a generic uh, example by taking over a standard file like a bash file, right? So without any kind of additional uh, topics, I just want to deploy that file to a specific folder on the end. The first approach would be to right click on files, click a new file, check where the file is located on your hard disk, on your UMS console, PC, or VM. Choose the file you want to upload to the UMS. And then without any other classifications, just keep undefined and check which kind of file location you want to use. Just be aware that WFS is one of the rare places on Android OS who are persistent, so we stay there over a reboot. And it might be a good idea if you have really a small file or a couple of small files, so everything beneath five megabytes, to place them there. Please don't go over that because it can result in weird behaviors, but in that case, you can leave it like it is. Then you have to define the access rights. So the access rights are what you're already knowing maybe from Linux. So if you do a change mode or change owner, which person, which group, or which other people might have which rights on your file. So usually the owner is user or root, and this one can then execute your script. If you are not sure how to do that and you want to test it, only for testing, please, you can put that one, which will result more or less in a 777 right, so everyone can do everything. So, it's uploaded. Now you have to assign it like a profile to your endpoint or directory. Let's put that on this endpoint and assign it immediately. So I'm switching to the endpoint now and we are seeing a new configuration. So nothing else since it's deployed to the file system. There is no further interaction needed. Let me double check now in a local terminal if the file already arrived on the endpoint. So I'm logging in as root. If you have to enter here a password, it will be the administrator password. I'm changing the directory to WFS and enter an LL which is listing the
content of the directory with all the information that we have available. So we are now seeing here my file bash.sh with our 777 right so everyone can access this file can write this file and can execute this file like i said not the best idea from a security perspective but if you want to test it by doing something locally you can start with that so the file is there that's great so that's the use case for transferring a file which is not covered by the use case i already mentioned before now let's come back to the other use cases you already might have the situation where you're opening a Firefox or a Chrome session locally to access a specific website in your company network or maybe a Netscaler or storefront and you get a connection unsecure, please verify your certificate error. That's where the certificate authority import function of the UMS is coming to its glance. So I'm not covering the part how to get the certificate from your certificate authority because I guess you already have someone in your company which is covering security needs, etc. in the PTI. If not, I will cover an upcoming tutorial regarding retrieving the certificate from a storefront or a Netscaler. But at the moment, I'm assuming you already have the file. Just one small hint, uh, before uploading to the UMS, I would always recommend to open the file with the editor of your choice. It can be a notepad, can be a J edit, it can be a mouse pad, whatever you like. But the only thing that you have to cover is that you have a begin certificate at the beginning of the file and an end certificate at the end of the file. That means that the certificate type is base64. If something else is showing up, like some hieroglyphs or weird characters, then you might have the wrong format of your certificate. Just to be clear, that's what it should look like. So assuming that uh, you're using the management suite, uh, you can go then to files, right click again, upload the new file, and now choose the certificate you received and change the classification to common certificate. Why I'm not using the web browser or SSL certificate instead? Because both of them are covering one, are covering one specific need. The web browser, certificate store the other one the general for the citrix workspace app or the maybe horizon so before going too deep in granularity i would recommend to use common certificate because it will cover all that stuff in one step so even if you might have chosen the web browser certificate it will also cover the ssl one so it will work with citrix workspace app client locally on store browse function and with the web browser so if you want to be sure that it will work, use common certificate, go to OK, assign it to your endpoint like usual and wait for the file transfer. So new configuration arrived. Let me check again, but this time not in WFS because there we have a subfolder which is called CR minus certs, which is certificate authority certs. And there we should find now our freshly transferred file, which is at trust external root CA. If you want to double check again, if the format is right, I mean, there is no reason why the certificate should have changed in between, but you can also do that with a more. So it works as expected. Um, you could also use now a Firefox session and open the uh, SQL DB, which is covering the search DB, but honestly, you don't have to it there, believe me. Let's now think about the fact where the file is not arriving on the endpoint. There's a couple of things that you could check. First one is, even if the direction is not from the endpoint to the OMS server, but you could easily check in the first step if you can open the port to the OMS server by using 8443, the standard port for the secured file transfer. Connection successful looks good. And if you want to go even further, I would recommend to open a web browser on the endpoint and navigate to a specific URL which is coming from the UMS server. So we stay on HTTPS. We use the IP address of the UMS server just because I want to avoid some issues on the DNS. So IP address, the port, so double dot 8443 then the subfolder of 
the web server which is called UMS underscore file transfer and enter. That's a warning I was referring to at the beginning. So as soon as a certificate is safe signed or there is no certificate authority which can verify the certificate, you get that kind of error. And that case is good because it's already certified by the UMS and we can accept the risk and continue. Now we have to log in into the UMS web service. If you're not sure which username uh, you can use there, just go back to your UMS, check which user you use for logging into the UMS itself. And if you want to be even more precise, you can go to system, administrator accounts, your user, and check on effective rights. Since I'm using the main UMS administrator, I would use another user and check now if I'm allowed with that user to log in into the web dev, which is the case. So if I'm using the user IGEL or admin RMC, I'm now able to see all the files available on my UMS server to download. And we should see somewhere our ad trust external CR root CRT. So if the file is listed, you're pretty close to be sure that it's not related to your issue. And if you click on it and you can download the file, it will go away too. So just in case you cannot download because I haven't uh, allowed access to the download folder at the moment. But if you see that, you're already good. Last but not least, um, I will check if time and date are set on the on your endpoint because that can also block some file transfer because of the certificate verification. And last one is also to check your firewall and or uh, antivirus on the UMS server side on your network to be sure that there isn't an SSL inspection or whatever else. So basically we covered now the transfer of our files into the operating system, which are now certificates. Last thing I didn't mention is how to handle custom partitions. Uh, we already have a really great GitHub site from uh, the Azure community where you can download a couple of custom partitions, but uh, there you get a tar.vz2 and an in file. So we already have also a tutorial where to find files, but just let me show you the transfer it. You have your UMS file transfer folder, and that's basically the web dev component where you get the files from. And now we see the files that we already have seen in our web browser. So if you want to deploy your custom partition, just copy it into that folder and refer it into your profile where you want to download. One last approach that I can share with you is when you click on your endpoint and you want to see which files were transferred to which time frame, just scroll down, go to file transfer status and check there if the status was okay, if uh, there was a status match which is coming up. That should help you to find out which file when transferred and which not. So and that's basically the file transfer on AgileOS and UMS. Thank you for joining our technical video session. All links mentioned in this session are available in the show notes section of this video. You will find more technical content and other videos on agilecommunity.com and agileacademylearn.agile.com.